everyone, welcome to Hoot, uh, where we'll cover as part of our Envoy series, the architecture overview and Envoy fundamentals. And this is part of a series. This is the first of a, a, well, a six episodes or seven uh, that will cover Envoy uh, every two weeks. And uh, we start with the basics. Uh, so today we'll just start with Envoy basics, kind of the motivation for Envoy, some core concepts, and we'll do some demos in the end that play around with it and see how it, how it works. And of course, if there's any questions, feel free to ask in the chat. All right, let me start my slideshow. So intro to Envoy, Wes. All right, so what's Envoy? Envoy is a cloud native proxy. Envoy can do L4, meaning TCP, and L7, meaning HTTP proxy. And you can put Envoy on your network's edge as an ingress gateway, or as a middle proxy, or as a sidecar proxy for your microservices. Now, when we say cloud native, what do we mean? We usually mean things that are meant to run in the cloud, in hyperscale, that are manageable, observable. And specifically with Envoy, you can see that it's extendable. Uh, you can add various features to Envoy without forking Envoy core itself. And that's important so that every company can adapt Envoy to their own use cases and they don't have to maintain their own fork of Envoy. Another thing with Envoy, and that's something uh, that you might have heard, is the eventual consistency of the API. So Envoy is not configured using configuration files. I mean, it does, but most of the time when it's deployed in, in enterprise environments, it's configured using an API. So if you heard of data plane versus control plane, Envoy is the data plane where the coming traffic goes through but in order to get its configuration, it communicates with a control plane to get configuration data. So unlike software like Nginx, you don't need to manage a configuration file on a server or anything like that. The configuration is deployed through a configuration channel, usually a gRPC connection to a control plane server that distributes this configuration. And that allows a lot of various deployment patterns. It allows for rapid scale out and easier configuration management, right? So think about Kubernetes where everything is immutable. When Envoy starts up, it can immediately connect to its configuration server and receive its configuration. And now that protocol that does the Envoy configuration API is called XDS and we'll cover it in a future episode. Another important thing is observability. And that's especially important when you deploy at scale, when you have a massive scale of software, you really have to have observability to understand what's going on. There's no, you can't just go into a machine and see because it's only one machine out of a thousand. Uh, so, Envoy has tracing and metrics that allow you to understand what's going on and has a rich set of, uh, of these metrics so you can see exactly what's going on with this Envoy instance. So that kind of what made Envoy so popular uh, and why we call it a cloud native proxy. Now, additionally, there's no Envoy Plus, right? There's only an open source upstream Envoy and uh, you can see it on GitHub everything, uh, every Envoy feature lands in there. All right, so moving on, just let's talk a little bit about core concepts in Envoy. Um, there is a, Envoy is essentially a proxy and a proxy receives data, manipulates it potentially, and then sends it away, right? And the way we tell Envoy to receive data is we create what's called a listener. A listener instructs Envoy to listen on a specified port, accept incoming connection, 
and do something with them, right? And that something is user defined. The way the user defines it, it's it's called using filters. So essentially, when Envoy gets data from the listener, it sends it through a chain of filters, and those filters decide what to do with the request. And usually there'll be a filter that sends the, this data upstream somewhere, right? So a listener just, and it's a bit of a circular dependency because I'm talking about filters before I've defined them, but a listener takes in a, a TCP connection, takes in the data, does something with the data uh, with pieces of code that are called filters and usually one of them will send it upstream. Now, what is an upstream in Envoy? In the Envoy terminology, it's called a cluster. A cluster is the destination of traffic usually. And a cluster is composed of endpoints, it's members. So when Envoy documentation talks about cluster membership, that means the individual endpoints of the cluster, right? And these endpoints are IP addresses eventually. Right, and they can come from DNS. They can be configured statically. Uh, you can, and you can also configure them dynamically using a protocol called EDS, Endpoint Discovery Service. So in the Android terminology, you'll see it called endpoints. You see it mentioned by a cluster membership, and you see it also being called cluster load assignment. Uh, in general, they, they refer to the members endpoints list of IP and ports that are part of a cluster. Now, the assumption is that all these endpoints implement the same API and we any data or request that's meant for the cluster could end in any of these endpoints. All right, so moving on, um, routes is part of doing something with a request, you can decide how to write it based on HD or its HTTP properties. So you can say, all right, I received a request on this listener. If the path is full, send it to cluster A. If the path is bar, send it to cluster B. And once we open up some Envoy config, we can show an example of that. Now, uh, the last con core concept I want to discuss is filters. So a filter in Envoy, Envoy has various extendability points and a filter is one of these ways that you can extend Envoy. Filter is essentially a piece of code that interacts with incoming data and can do something with it. It doesn't have to, but it can. So for example, a filter can manipulate the data, change it. So if we talked about, if we're talking about HTTP, for example, and we're talking about HTTP requests, a filter can add a header or remove a header, change the body, for example, turn all the body to uppercase, things along that nature. Now in Envoy, and we're going to see this when we go to the demo part, filters are chained together, which means the request starts uh, from a one filter and then goes into another, right? And that's what they refer to a filter chain. And in that sense, the order matters because if a filter is first in the chain, its effects will happen first. And we'll see how the filter chain looks when we uh, do the, this live demo. Uh, for now, filters are a piece of code that can be uh, added into Envoy that does some or can do some manipulation to the request. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the flow of the data. So we have a downstream client like an app or your phone app, your website, your React app that sits on the internet and sends a request to the backend, right? As we discussed, this request ends up in a listener. The listener in Envoy uh, doesn't do much. It just uh, sends uh, 
the request through its series of filters. And these filters make a routing decision. And after the filters have uh, all run, it will eventually get sent to an upstream cluster. One of the endpoints in the cluster will be selected for routing and the data will be sent there. So it comes from the downstream through the listener, one by one through the filters in the filter chain and during which a decision is made to where to route the request. So the routing decision is made in the filters, a cluster is selected and within the cluster, a host is selected or an endpoint and then the data gets sent there. Now let's understand a little bit about the, how the, the tr this routing decision is done. Uh, so Envoy has basically a listener has a list of TCP filters and these TCP filters can interact with TCP data, right? They can read bytes and write bytes. One of those TCP filters is called the HTTP connection manager and that filter kind of turns Envoy into an L7 or an HTTP proxy, right? So this filter reads bytes, write bytes, and converts that into an HTTP request with header and body and trailers. So a listener has a list of TCP filters. One of them will be usually the HTTP connection manager filter. And in the HTTP connection manager filter would be a list of HTTP filters because the HTTP connection manager just converted now the flow into an HTTP flow. So we now have a list of HTTP filter that instead of reading and writing bytes can do things in the HTTP level, adding headers, removing headers. Instead of bytes, we're talking about headers and body all of a sudden. And the main reason I'm telling you this because we're going to go through some Envoy configuration file and you'll exactly see that. So the HCM filter can has also is aware of the, uh, the routes that the user wants to do and can select the route based on the request properties, right? So if you have a path that is full and it if your routing rule says that foo should go to cluster A, the HCM filter it does that math. It, it compares the headers to the routing rules and selects the destination. So in the end of all these HTTP filters, you'll usually see a router filter. And that's the filter that sends the request upstream. Right? Without the router filter, and without the router filter being last in the chain, uh, nothing will get sent upstream essentially. And any filter after the router filter has no effect because the router filter sends stuff upstream and doesn't forward request to the next filter. So probably 99.999% of Envoy configurations that use uh, the HTTP connection manager, you'll see a router filter and it will be in the end of the HTTP filter chain. All right, so I think uh, that's enough background for uh, the demos we're gonna, going to do. And of course, if there's questions, I'm looking at the chat, so feel free to ask and I will answer them. Uh, and with that, let's go and see the demos I've prepared for us. Let's close this thing. All right, here we go. So examples. Uh, we'll start with simple, just to show that Envoy is a TCP proxy as well. I've prepared a small TCP echo server. All that it does is copy the whatever stream of data it received to the response. And now let's review the Envoy configuration to proxy this simple TCP server. So we first start with an admin part. We don't have to, it's optional, but uh, we define the path for access logs and, and admin, uh, admin port, which we'll cover in a, in a future talk on how to use this admin port. Uh, for now, what we care about is the Envoy static resources. 
And in the future, we'll talk about dynamic resources. For now, we'll just start with the static resources, uh, just as a, as a way to start. So as you can see, like we talked about in the Android core concepts, we have a list of listeners and a list of clusters. And listeners means the port Android listens on, and clusters are the destination of traffic that Envoy sends data to. So you can see here, I have one cluster, I call it some cluster. Resolution is done by DNS. A load balancer is route Robin, I'm not gonna get into it now. And it has these hosts that are, has this address and this port, so only one host. All right, so that's our destination of the traffic. Our listener, uh, it's called listener zero, because why not? It listens on port 10,000, it binds to any address, so it's not bound to localhost, anyone can uh, connect to it. A listener can have multiple filter chains, uh, for now we'll just stick to one filter chain, so this is our filter chain, and you can see that our filter chain only has one filter, the TCP proxy filter, and it's configured to send traffic to this cluster. Now let's see this uh, live in action. I have here my cheat sheet of shell commands. And so let's run the server and let's run Envoy. You can see Envoy is starting with its logs and I have MC installed in my toolbox. So I can now echo high to netcat and netcat if you're not familiar it's a utility that will connect to whatever you tell it to connect and will pipe std in and out to the to the tcp connection you just made so i can echo high and you can see that i get high back so echo high into netcat netcat send this into envoy envoy send it into the tcp server tcp server replied high back send it through envoy send it through netcat that printed it in the shell. All right, so that's a simple TCP configuration. Uh, um, let me just kill all the programs here. All right, so let's talk about HTTP now. So I've prepared also an HTTP echo server and it's essentially the same. It just echoes the HTTP body of the request that it received. And let's see how we configure Envoy to use a uh, proxy this service. So I have a simple HTTP configuration. And as before, we have a cluster list. This time, instead of using the old deprecated host configuration, which I used in the first example for simplicity, I'm using the newer load assignment configuration. It's essentially, it allows you to do more things, but this specific configuration is equivalent to what we've seen a second ago. It just configures an address and a port. You can do a lot more things with, with load assignment where you can define localities and priorities, but we're not gonna get into that now. So we have here the cluster. And it has uh, its load assignment, which is essentially the, the list of endpoints, the members, and it's uh, like before, just one address and port. Moving on to the listeners, uh, you can see that I still listen on the same port, still have one filter chain, but this time in the filter chain, I don't have the TCP proxy filter, I have the HTTP connection manager and the HTTP connection manager converts Envoy from an L4 or a TCP proxy to an L7 or HTTP proxy, right? So you can see here all the configuration for the HTTP connection manager TCP filter. So uh, stat prefix is just how it will show up in the Envoy stats. We'll get into that in a, in a later presentation. Uh, the routing config, this part here is what defines where things will go based on the properties on the, of the request. So if you remember before in the TCP proxy, we just had a cluster name, which was the destination. But here 
we actually have the ability to route based on HTTP request properties. So a route config is composed of virtual host. A virtual host has a name, which is uh, not important right now. And it has the domain. So asterisk means any domain. Uh, this, is, this will match the host header in the HTTP request. And then we have the routes, the list of routes. And the list of routes is composed of a matcher and a route action. So we match on prefix slash, which effectively means any request. And we, what we do with the, with the request that match, we send it to a cluster called some cluster. Now, as you can see, routes is an array and I can have more than one route and they're processed in order. And the first route that matches wins. Uh, in this case, I only have one route, so it's pretty simple. Now, in order for anything to actually happen here, I have to define HTTP filters. And you can see I only have one filter, the Envoy HTTP router. And that's the filter that I must have here. And it must be less in order for traffic to reach to some cluster, uh, to my cluster called some cluster. Because the router filter is the filter that performs the connection to the upstream cluster. All right, so let's see this one in action. And again, I have my command cheat sheet. So let's do this. All right, so Envoy is working. And now instead of using netcat, I can use curl. So I can curl and you can see I get high back. You can do hello instead and hello back. So essentially, Let's go over the configuration. Traffic reached to the listener to port 10,000. It went through the filter chain to the HTTP connection manager TCP filter. The HTTP connection managers parses the TCP stream into HTTP request and response. It performs the routing decision and see that and decide that it needs to go to the cluster, some cluster and then sends it down the filter chain. In this case, we only have one filter, the HTTP router that sends the request to the destination. And then it all happens in reverse. The destination returns a response, flows back through the filters and back to the client. All right, uh, last example for today, just to make it a little bit more interesting. And one sec, let me just clean up my previous example. All right. We, we will sh demonstrate how to use the cores Envoy filter to inject cores header to a request. And that's something very common when doing web development. So let's review the filter configuration. So like before, we have the cluster. It's similar to before, so I'll just collapse it here to get it out of the way. I mean, the same like before. And let's focus on the listener. So like before, we have listener, listener on port 10,000. It has a single filter chain. And in the filter chain, a single TCP proxy, the HTTP connection manager, which converts Envoy to BL7. Uh, same route, route table, routes the prefix slash, which is essentially any request to the cluster, some cluster uh, for any domain. But you also see that we've added course configuration on the route. And the course configuration on the route is consumed by this course filter that we added to the list of filter. So the course configuration says that if the origin is solo IO, add, essentially add the course matters, allow the origin. And in order for this configuration to have any effect, we have to add the course filter before the router filter, right? If it was reverse, if I were to do this, uh, specifically nowadays, they safeguard against this and Envoy will error, but the router filter sends the request upstream, so any filter after it does not get executed. Uh, oh, I see a question on chat. Can you give an example where this I have more than one filter chain? Uh, yes, uh, so in that case, uh, if multiple filter chain are mainly used for SNI, uh, 
the request will only go to one filter chain. And the question is which filter chain? So if you have SNI where you do SSL level routing to different hosts based on the SNI header in the SSL, uh, then a different filter chain may be selected, but a connection belongs to one filter chain, right? So a request will only be in one connection and connection is only in one filter chain. Uh, what do the type mean in uh, the type config? A very good question. So the answer is that Envoy configuration is not meant for people, it's meant for machines. And because Envoy is extendable, the code that reads it needs to know to which internal component it belongs to, right? So this type essentially hints Envoy to which internal component to create and provide this configuration, right? Because of Envoy is extendable and we want to make it easy to extend, that's our top priority. Making it readable for humans is second priority. And we have this type information here that essentially you can think of it kind of like the good old days of Java where you can define a Java class in an XML file to instantiate it. It essentially tells Envoy which internal extension handles this configuration. And let's see, uh, Sean and Emma, yes. So Sean demo on Envoy via config via XDS. We have that planned uh, in, in the list of talks. Uh, we have one specifically for XDS. Uh, so that's gonna be up in the future. How does the request and the reply go through the filler chain? How is the reply my specific request? So an Envoy has an internal stream abstraction that represents both the reply and the request. So when the request goes through the filter chain, there's an object that holds its state. And when it, we get a response, we know where to associate it to. Now it's different between HTTP one and HTTP two with HTTP one, it's on the same connection. So once you get a response, we know the connection and we know to associate it to the right stream. In HTTP two, you have a stream ID that associates the response to the request. Either way, Envoy keeps track of it and knows how to do it. Uh, what does Glue and the adds over Envoy? So Glue is a control plane for Envoy and the distribution of Envoy. So we have our own version of Envoy. We take Envoy upstream and extend it by adding more custom filters. For example, we have a transformation filter that can perform advanced body transformations to request. And we've seen that very popular with customers who are transitioning from a different product onto Envoy. So yeah, and in addition, Glue is a control plane uh, where you do it allows you to have a more service approach to self-service approach to Envoy configuration where you don't need to deal with writing configuration files like we do here. And again, we're going to see examples of that uh, as we go down uh, this series of talks. This is just a very, you know, begin, beginner talk. So we just do it with static configuration file. Uh, I hope that answers of all the questions. If not, feel, feel feel free to write some more. And continuing with the cores example. So like we said, we have here two filters, cores and router. Cores will read this cores configuration and inject cores headers if needed. And the router will send a request upstream. So now let's see this in action. And we have here my cheat sheet. So let's start everything. All right, and now we can send a request to a example or with example.com origin. And you can see that there's nothing special about the response. But if we send a request to with origin solo IO, you can see that the course filter kicked in and added the access control allow origin header to the response, indicating to the browser that it can send requests uh, uh, to that origin or from that origin rather, uh, yes. So let's recap what we've seen 
or what we talked about today is Envoy core concept. And we've covered uh, listener routes, clusters, endpoints, and filters. We talked about why Envoy is a cloud native proxy, unlike other solutions like Apache and Nginx, for example even though it's uh, they're making progress every day so don't don't quote me on that they might they might be more in a more advanced state right now we talk a little bit about the flow of data and showed some example with uh, two more two filters uh, one course that it's course headers to the response based on configuration and one a uh, router and that's pretty much it for today. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Uh, we're Solayo, uh, like one of the questions asked, we make Gru, uh, which is an API gateway based on Envoy that extends Envoy and allows you to use it easily in Kubernetes.